People ask me all the time, what's a really good schooling fish that you can put in a decent sized tank that looks really good? And a new recent answer for, my, for me is the Colombian red and blue tetra. You can't go wrong with this fish. You'll see it listed as just the Colombian tetra. So let's take a few minutes, let's talk about this fish, uh, where it comes from, what it is, and how do you keep it happy in a glass box. The Colombian Tetra is actually a newcomer in the hobby. It hasn't been around all that long. The guy, did, the guy that discovered it was from Germany, and it, 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 he found it really easy to breed. So it, it hit Europe first, and then it kind of trickled over into the United States where I'm from. But this fish hasn't been around all that long. It was discovered in 1995 in guess where? That's right, Colombia. Um, the scientific name for this fish is, I'm probably going to butcher it, Hyphesobrican. Hyphes, Hyphesobrican. Anyways, you can read it, Colombianus. And yeah, it comes from Colombia. Uh, there's actually a couple other uh, members of that genus. I'm not 100% sure what they are. I haven't done that research yet. A lot of the research said that these guys were kind of expensive, but I got to be honest, they're actually pretty cheap now. Uh, like I said earlier, the, the fish you're getting, they're not coming out of the wild. They're coming out of captive bred facilities, and you can actually find this fish pretty cheap. All right, now we know what it is, where it comes from, what are its basic other water parameters. They're actually pretty easy. This fish will take a, a little bit above neutral. Uh, it, it prefers a slightly acidic, but man, I'm telling you, this thing's coming from Florida fish farms. I'm sure you can keep it at 8.5. Uh, if you're trying to breed it, I would probably go in the, the like 7.0 to 6.5 if I was going to make an attempt at breeding this fish. But you can keep it in harder water. It, it's an extremely hardy fish. It's not going to fall apart. It's not going to fall apart on you if you keep it, you know, in harder water. Temperature wise, uh, again, pretty simple. Low 70s to mid 80s. That's a pretty big range. Uh, most people will say that if you want to keep it happy, you know, at a stable temperature, high 70s, somewhere around in there, probably, it probably breeds or would want to start spawning in the high 70s. Uh, but yeah, you can take it up hotter than that. So, and food-wise, again, extremely easy fish to feed. It, it, it knows, it knows flakes, it knows blood worms, it knows you know, freeze dried, it, you, you know, you can feed it dog on anything you want. Um, I'm sure it'll tear the heck out of brine shrimp. So yeah, the, the basic parameters are the, of this fish, they're extremely forgiving and a pretty hardy fish. All right, let's talk about one more thing before we talk about what it's really like to keep them. We're gonna talk about size. It's gonna sound like not much, okay? This fish only gets to about a little over two and a half inches. However, it gets two and a half inches all the way around. The, this fish continues to grow tall as it grows long. It's not, it's not like a cherry barb where it's just going to keep growing long and, and laterally or up and down it stays kind of the same. This fish is going to be like a two and a half inch circle. So we'll, we'll talk in a minute about what, what I think the basic tank size is for this fish. And it's going to surprise you because I've seen some research that says you can keep this fish in a 10-gallon tank. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's not the case. All right, what does this fish actually like to keep? First of all, we, we got to talk about, number one, this is not your typical small little tetra. This is a tetra that we just talked about. It's going to get pretty big. Two and a half inches doesn't sound like much, but when it's two and a half inches all the way around, trust me, it's a substantial fish. This is also a tetra that is a little more barb-like. You know, uh, we, we kind of sometimes laugh and joke in the, the hobby that the piranha is a tetra. 
So, you know, you kind of got to keep that in mind. This is not a Tetra that you want to keep with slow moving uh, fish with long flowing fins. This video is slowed down substantially because I would make you guys dizzy on how fast this fish actually swims back and forth. Uh, this fish can be nippy. And I'm going to tell you what, if you put this fish in too small of a tank, it's going to get cranky. And it's gonna, they're just going to start picking on each other. They need their space. Minimum tank size for this particular fish, I would say, would be a 4 foot long tank. So 55 gallon would be minimum. And I know that sounds like a lot for a Tetra, but trust me, this fish gets to a substantial size. I've had them when they were a little bigger, and trust me, they will get cranky in small spaces. Uh, when you're talking about this fish, you kind of have to kind of think of them sort of like a tiger barb. A tiger barb's kind of got that same mentality, you know, if you, if you keep me in too small of a space, I'm going to get cranky and I'm going to start picking on people. And these tetras are no different. Alright, so what are they actually like though? If you give them, if you give them the space that, we, that they need, what are they actually like? And I'll tell you, it varies throughout the day. Just like with the red tail shark, you know, how he acts during the day is going to change. What you've been seeing in this video is when they're kind of schooled up and they're just going back and forth across the tank, uh, they'll also go through part of the day where they just kind of spread out and all of them are just kind of doing their own thing or you might see a small group of them in one, one half of the tank and a small group in the other half of the tank. And they're just chilling out, they're taking it easy, they're enjoying life. And then later on in the day, usually in the evening, you'll see them kind of gather up as a group and they'll, they'll do their thing across the tank. And that's kind of what it's like. They don't, they're not a constant schooler. They'll, they'll spread out and they just kind of do their own thing for a little while and then they'll, some of them, not all, some of them will just keep doing their own thing and they just want to be left alone, but a large group of them, they'll get together and they'll just start running around the, the tank. And as long as they got the space, they don't mess with anybody. They're just like, hey man, we're doing laps, you know. Think of them like the mall walker, you know. <laughs> They're just walking around the mall, having a good time, just leave them alone, everything will be okay. So, yeah, they... They're not always going to be in that tight school that looks really cool in a big tank. The, this tank is a six foot long tank. And uh, I think it can support a school of them. Uh, these guys are a little bit younger. I got a few that are a little bit maybe six months older than the main group. But yeah, for the most part, they... they, they just like a tiger barb they school around for a little while and then they're just kind of chilling out and hanging out doing their own thing anyways i think you get the basic gist of what it's like um so we'll just do a recap kind of not make this one as long as a lot of my other species profiles get so uh just to recap ph somewhere around neutral man just about anything we call a fish tank will be fine uh, temperature again wide range uh, low 70s to mid 80s uh, 78 77 78 might be the, the most optimal if you're gonna go with a constant temperature feeding wise anything we call a normal fish food uh, they're aggressive feeders I really didn't talk like talk about that too much but they're extremely quick and so they can outcompete maybe some of the slower, slower moving fish. Uh, the the rest of it, like I said, you you got to think of them more like a tiger barb. You know, uh, this is not a an extremely peaceful tetra. This is a tetra that can get cranky. So my opinion, minimum tank size four foot long. It's just my opinion, if you want to try to shoehorn your fish into something smaller, you know, that's not my call. But I will tell you, this fish can get and will get cranky. Uh, so that's about it. I mean, the blue coloring will happen more the, as they grow older. They get more of the blue sheen on them. 
But, uh, yeah, they start off with it as well. Um, it's not an, as intense as it is when, once they get older. Uh, the, the red fin, as long as they're happy, you always see that red. They always have it. Oh, oh to tell male from female, I did read that the, the very first rays on the dorsal fin are kind of elongated as opposed to the females. The females will have more of a rounded dorsal fin. Uh, other than that, that's almost about all I know about these fish. I say give them a try if you've got the tank that's appropriate for them. And they're a really neat fish, and they look good, and they're, they're great and fun to watch. Trust me. All right, with that, um, I'm out. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Later.